A train driver who was about to enter a tunnel when the 7.8 magnitude Kaikoura quake struck said he feared the Alpine fault had ruptured. As next week's anniversary of the quake approaches, Kiwi rail driver Wayne Sullivan told me via live view he hit the brakes as he saw dust falling at the entrance to the tunnel and found himself alone, sandwiched between the cliff face and the ocean. I was actually reasonably safe sitting in the cab. My biggest concern was the tsunami threat from the ocean to my direct left. Uh, but yeah, the, t the tunnel ahead of me, that had some rocks falling on it that I went and explored after a little bit, after I got a bit more curious. And when the tsunami warning came through as well, I figured get to high ground anyway. But those rocks were realistically probably more dangerous than the threat of a tsunami because I, I figured with the tsunami, you'd see the water rush out first and then I'd have time to react. Whereas Rocks falling down a cliff face don't give you too much warning and they cause a fair bit of impact if they uh, hit you. So who's talking to you? Your radio's still working, right? You do have contact with your controller. I did have contact with him, not immediately. I actually, as soon as I realised there was an earthquake, maybe 30 seconds after I'd stopped, I hit the emergency button, which sends an emergency signal through to train control. Uh, so that alerts them that, you know, A, I'm safe and I'm in the cab, but also that there's been an emergency I need to report to them and, and give them a a bit of a detailed explanation of what's going on. So that uh, started cycling through channels and normally it locks on as soon as it can. This one went through to about channel five. So there was obviously some kind of communications right. failure in between that time. Uh, and that's when Terry ca called me up uh, by voice and said that there'd been an earthquake and I should stop. Uh, I'd already been stopped, but it was nice to know that I didn't do it for no reason. Yeah, and so then you decided to go away from the sea. Is that right? Did you sort of head inland and up the hill? Yeah, uh, the tunnel ahead of me, uh, obviously, there's a little bit of land on top of the tunnel. So I, I just went along the road and uh, got on top of there. There was no traffic coming through, obviously, which I didn't actually click on to for about another hour or so. I thought, geez, I haven't seen any trucks for a while. So, uh, yeah, I, I just got on top of that tunnel and that's where I saw the rocks and the debris. And uh, But it wasn't until daybreak that I really saw some serious damage on the road, uh, on the tunnel above the one I'd just come through. Uh, that was, yeah, that was a big eye-opener, and I didn't hang around there too long. And so you get the honour of taking the first uh, locomotive. You had the honour of taking the first locomotive through uh, after the repair of the line post-earthquake. What was that like? Yeah, that was a, that was a good experience. Um, so uh, on the night of the earthquake, I changed over with uh, Ellie from uh, a locomotive engineer from Picton, uh, Paul Foskett, and um, he actually drove the first freight revenue train you're referring to uh, from Picton to Kaikoura, uh, and we swapped over there. So he got to retail a few things and, and, and address the crowd that was gathering at Kaikoura. That was um, certainly one of the more emotional experiences was being in the town itself in the morning because you know that people who have been through these sort of things and are, and are now trying to get back to normality, having this situation that there was a lot of emotion involved. Uh, getting to Christchurch, a little less so because uh, mm. you know it didn't really go through the experience itself of the Kaikoura earthquake and and everything after that. One final thing, and I want you to wax poetic, and there is a fine tradition of Australians waxing poetic, although you're obviously Kiwi now, Wayne, but can you describe for people who've never been along that line uh, what it's like, that, that, that beautiful railway uh, track that just cuts along the coast for, for long, long stretches, and there would be days the sea would be like a mirror, and there would be days the sea would be wild and boiling, and it must be a magnificent stretch of track to drive. It really is a nice run. Uh, I think you've covered it there, though, John. Oh, no, no! <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Uh, you come through the... You come through the mountainsides and then you all of a sudden you come through a tunnel that opens up and, you know, the ocean's there on your right. And, uh, the Kaikoura coastline itself, the scenery's just absolutely stunning. It's a nice track to run. Um, you get to see a lot more on the track of the, of the coastline and different aspects of it when you're on the train rather than going through a car, uh, in a car. Uh, yeah, it, it really is nice. Uh, it's certainly my favourite line to, dri to drive. Um, the west line's a very close second. Uh, I don't like going south, it's not entertaining. But north is fantastic, it's, it's absolutely beautiful and as soon as they get passenger services up and running again, hopefully people will jump on board and, and once we get it all up to scratch, it'll be good. It will be good, Wayne Sullivan.